Production support for the weekly special is provided by Smithville, a local provider of fiber optic based internet, TV, and phone services. Smithville's quantum fiber optic network allows large amounts of data to travel around the world from local homes and businesses. More at smithville.net. Siam House, offering Thai fine dining and takeout, including stir fries, curry dishes, and banana fritters as featured in Bon Appetit. Lunch buffet 11 to 3 p.m. weekdays, corner of 4th and Dunn. IU School of Public Health Bloomington, addressing public health needs by preventing disease, promoting health, and improving quality of life across the state and around the world through research, teaching, and community engagement. publichealth.indiana.edu. And WTIU members, thank you. Welcome to the weekly special. Tonight we're going to take a look back at some of our favorite weekly special moments. Absolutely, and we've had a lot of great times together through the years. From the unbelievable places right here in Indiana, to discover and explore, to the fabulous and often inspiring Hoosiers we've met across the state. And of course, some exciting moments that we've had the opportunity to experience. It's all coming up right now, so join us as Pam and I share our favorite weekly special memories. I'm Pam Thrash. And I'm Joe Wren. So there is a very important reason that we are looking back on our favorite moments tonight. Yes, unfortunately, this is Joe and I's last episode on the weekly special. And Joe, it has been such an awesome, awesome experience being with you each and every week for the weekly special. Yes, it is. And in honor, our producer, <laughs> Sarah, has yes. got us a little bit of this uh, bubbly here to open, to enjoy as our last um, on our last our show. Last what show, do you think? I huh? know. It is that been, nice of her? It's a good it's a good reason to celebrate all of our awesome times together. Some of our more awesome times off air, but still <laughs> it's been good all in all. Do you know how to do that, Joe? Yeah, we're getting there we go. Joe all goes right. to pop a cork. <laughs> Let's see how that is. Oh, whoa. <laughs> All right, Joe. Okay. Let's uh, get a drink and, and we move, move along. We always do things dramatic here on <laughs> this week. Whoops. Okay. Just never mind. While move, you do move that. Move along. Move our, along. Our viewers won't wait too long to see me again, though. One of my favorite things about being on the weekly special has been experiencing the incredible Indiana Hoosier Pride right here in Bloomington. And on Tuesday, August 27th, I will be introducing a very special documentary, Hoosier Rising, about the IU basketball team. Take a quick peek. To put that Indiana jersey on and put on ball the first time, for me that was surreal because it was like a culmination of everything I had worked for from the time I was nine years old. No program had ever had that many players leave and starting a season with a walk-on freshman as your point guard. It was probably, you know, one of the darkest times now you basketball. And now you're, you're at a point where you had to hire the right guy. It's Indiana. It's Indiana. When you go through those down times, you almost feel a sense of like manifest destiny with these guys right now. The way people feel about Indiana Hoosier basketball. And be sure to tune in on Tuesday, August 27th at 8 p.m. to see Who's Your Rising Pam. It's really an amazing story. Yes, it is. And Joe, the viewers should be happy to know that they're going to still see you on WTIU with a brand new show that kicks off at the end of September. Right, it's called Indiana News Desk. We're really excited about that. We're working really hard to get that ready. But Pam, this has been a wonderful <laughs> experience here. And we've yes. done some really athletic things too, haven't we? Yes, we have. Some of my favorites. Um, I loved going zip lining. I loved a lot of the Joe Go segments when you were <laughs> jousting and when you were Zumba and rollerblading and things like that. But one of my favorite experiences was I actually got an opportunity to go longboarding. Let's check it out. 
Okay, hi Garrett. Hey Pam. I'm Pam from the weekly special. Nice to meet you. And um, I've been told you're going to teach me how to longboard. Yeah, tonight. we're going to show you a few things. And okay. One of the most important things with longboarding is safety. Okay. First thing you need, a helmet. I got my helmet. Good. Uh, next thing, generally when you fall, people tend to go hands forward, uh -huh. palms forward. So wrist guards, definitely <laughs> recommended. Okay. All right. Now what? Next, elbow pads, because that's an okay. easy easy one to hit, too. Okay. Next thing, like I said, some people tend to fall knee first. Yep. Um, so knee pads. Knee pads. Okay. Now stopping, when you're going down a big hill. Let's think about stopping. The most common method of coming to a dead stop is doing a foot break, which is where you de-weight the board mm -hmm. a little bit, and you come to a a grinding stop like okay. that. And so I'm assuming I should just play around with whether a wide stance or which foot. And... Yes, yeah, stance is all personal preference and okay. how you're comfortable. There's no right or wrong. Okay. It's just how you want to ride and what's fun for you. Well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is there a front? Tally ho. <laughs> That's good. You're doing good. We are going to start picking up. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. And it, and as I kept going, I kept picking up speed and eventually somebody had to like grab my shirt and, and stop me. <laughs> but Joe, we cannot forget some of the crazy things you've done this last year. And I don't know about you, but this next story was definitely my favorite Joe Goes moment. Right, thigh candy is in the house. <laughs> what is the game? How does this work? Roller derby, it is a point scoring game. Uh -huh. There are two opposing teams. You have four blockers in each pack and two jammers. And your jammers have a star panty on their helmet, has a big star on the side, and they're the ones who can score points. And the objective is to get past the other blockers on what's called your first pass. And then when you come back around to the pack again, that's the, those blockers in that pack, that's when you can score points. And this is all on because it gets rough too, right? Isn't it full contact This sport? is full contact, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> There's a reason we wear these. <laughs> it's not pretty, but it's effective. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a beginner. You gotta know how to skate. You have to have a little bit of skating yeah. skill. You don't have to have much though. If you look at the track, you can yeah. see girls in all different kinds of gear and different kinds of things mm -hmm. and at different skill levels. Yeah. It is best to be able to skate a little bit, but really that's the whole point of our boot camp and our skills camp is to teach you those things. Yeah. So you don't have to have a bunch of skills to start derby. Mm -hmm. You have to have some basic concepts. When you're skating, if you're actually in what's called skater stance mm -hmm. and it's kind of, you're bent over like this a little uh -huh. bit, you're just that much closer to the ground. Uh -huh. So if you actually hit the ground, Right, well, that's what this is for. Exactly. That's what that's for. And I was going to say, let me have... Hey, Sass. All right, well, I guess we're ready to do this. Let's go derby. All right, Come let's on. go. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Wait, I'm coming. Oh, I forgot this. <laughs> this one here? Okay. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That's one lap. One lap. Woo! I'm Joe Brown, and I survived the roller derby. <laughs> oh, those were so fun. The thing I learned most, though, about those is it looks easy. 
but it's not. And you jump into it, whether it's the rollerblading or the uh, uh, roller skating uh -huh. or the break dancing. I was just going to say break oh, dancing. Oh, my gosh. They and make it look really easy, and then they show you trying it, do. and it don't look so easy. No, no. <laughs> but some of the things, too, that's been so great are getting out of the studio oh, and yeah. doing things yeah. and seeing some wonderful places right here in Indiana. I know. We've, we really got to explore Evansville, and I'd never really done that before, and mm -hmm. Cincinnati, and, and a lot of our shows out and about. It's just been it's been a great experience, mm -hmm. and hopefully we've brought that to some of our viewers, too. Absolutely. And you know what? We have definitely gotten to see a lot of incredible places hosting the weekly special like we're talking about. And, Joe, there was one of those places that I wanted to go to for years, ever since I've been in Bloomington, and I finally got the opportunity to do so for this particular show. Well, Joe, here we are at Baker's Junction, a place I've been very curious about for at least 20 years. I've passed by it. I'm very curious about it. And finally, I'm going to come visit Baker's Junction. And John Baker has been kind enough to uh, let us tour the place. Hi, John. Hi. Nice to meet you, finally. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, how long has this been open to the public? Well, since I started in 1976. Just like the sign says. Yeah. Now, whenever I've thought of this place, I've only thought of it as a, a haunted kind of a place. And you have so many things in your yard, skeletons oh, yeah. and coffin, and you just like to keep it up all the time. So this is yeah. where it starts. Well, of course, the most fascinating thing here is uh, I've got a cut off finger keychain made from my finger. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's real. Okay. Yeah, I cut that off about a year ago. <laughs> okay. People find that quite fascinating. Well, yeah, that's a good entrance. That's a uh, good way to start. The kitty haunted house. So the kitty parts first, and this yeah. would be anybody. Well, this is the beginning. Okay. And then this makes things turn on. Oh my goodness. Okay, and we're moving. This is my hologram room. I just kind of collect those. Oh, hey, those are just little toys, and I just freaked <laughs> out. I'm not doing very well. Yeah. And when you go out here. The, at night, this would be where the haunted, big, the adult haunted train starts. Okay. Should be somebody working there. In here. Okay. <laughs> I guess there is. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Thank you, it's daytime. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm getting my money's worth today. You're not going to tell me to walk through there, are you? Yeah, it goes all the way through. Oh. Enjoy that too much too, I can tell. Friendly people welcome. Tell me planning's only pinheads, keep out. <laughs> Hopefully we've been friendly for we you are. today. <laughs> <laughs> so is that worth the price of admission? <laughs> Yes, it was. And, you know, uh, I've always wanted to go there. I mean, since since I was a freshman at IU when I moved down here, it's just one of those places I've passed by and always wanted to go to. And they just celebrated the 60th birthday of the owner. Uh, so these Halloween shows, though, were some of my favorites. Yeah. Every year there's just something new and crazy <laughs> out there. They are so fun. Most definitely. Well, sometimes we were traveling across the state and sometimes we were a little closer to home or actually in my home. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite segments was when we actually invited a guest into my kitchen to teach me how to make my very own Joe Wren ale. And here we are with Bill Ballinger in my kitchen. The very first time, it, I have no clue what all this is. You can make beer in your kitchen with a simple stock pot like this and some simple ingredients. The best way is just to get a couple gallons of water in there and, and get it going. And we'll go ahead and get you to grab the grains. Kind it of a darker like fruit. Cereal. It smells like breakfast yeah. cereal. As a matter of fact, you could taste this. Mm -hmm. Very sweet, mm -hmm. raisin-like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just put it in. Yeah, like a big tea bag. Like a big tea bag. Okay, Bill, so we've been about one hour since we've taken the bag out. So what's next? We have our uh, liquid malt extract here that's been soaking in hot water. Put your finger in there and just, I mean, really sugary sweet. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. really delicious. Mm -hmm. And we want to pour this in. Go me to stir. And we'll stir it until 
until it's completely dissolved and then we'll put it back on the burner and return it to a boil. Okay, so I call it a first wort hop. Um, we're gonna add it in just a little bit before the boil starts to try to get a little bit of uh, flavor qualities from this hop as well. Okay, so just thin. So. Now it's, uh, we've been boiling for 50 minutes, so it's time to do the next hop addition. Just like that. Nothing to it. Oh, I can smell them already. Mm-hmm. Very aromatic. This will be our third hop or our triple hop addition. Now we'll let these soak in here for one minute and then we'll go ahead and turn the heat off and cool this, um, this liquid as quick as possible. And we will add our yeast to this container and this is where we will do our fermentation. This will stay in the fermenter for approximately two weeks, at which point we will bottle it and it will be beer. So Joe, hey. how did the beer turn out? It was excellent, it was very good. You know, people who run into me at the grocery store say, I want your job. You wonder <laughs> yeah. why? Isn't this <laughs> exactly, amazing? Exactly. It was so fun. <laughs> and you know, through the years, I've been amazed by people you can meet right in your own backyard. Looking back, this story definitely caught me by <laughs> surprise. The Lawrence County 4-H Fair is like many others. Busy with eager spectators taking in all the sights and sounds of their annual summer tradition. The rides and food are fun, but it's the showmanship of animals that's the main attraction. 4-H'ers exude a passion and love for animals they care and proudly show each year. But elephants and camels? No, these aren't new categories in the Lawrence County Fair. It's a way for fairgoers to get more of what they came for. Brett Cardin is owner and animal trainer of BNC Ranch Animal Acts, a touring educational show featuring animals you don't see every day. Well, I mean, I've been around them my whole life, so they're kind of like my pets. Uh, so I don't really look at it as a job. It's kind of just normal for me, you know, because I've been around them my whole life. Brett inherited his love for animals from his dad who owned the Shriner Circus. Now, 30 weeks of the year, he showcases his pets across the Midwest. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it takes time. You can't obviously just take an animal and, and start working around uh, people. Like the, the camels, they were bottle raised. So we're kind of like their mamas. The elephants, we've been around them the, pretty much their whole lives. We fed them, take care of them. We're pretty much their mahuts, what they call it over in India. He says taking care of elephants and camels isn't too much different than other pets, except for food quantity. An elephant will eat around three to four 50 pound bale of hay. Uh, it'll eat 50 pounds of grain each and every day, fruit, apple. They drink about 100 gallons of water each a day. Before the show, he gave us a special tour of the animals. This is Duchess. Uh, she's a 33 year old female Asian elephant. Her, she has a real pretty, like a leopard type look to her. This is uh, Sheik, he's a 12-year-old uh, dromedary camel. The other one on the other side is Jewel, he's five years old. So we've got some dogs who do some backflips, handstands, and all kinds of stuff. The crowd still gathers and anticipation rises, waiting for that first glimpse of an elephant. When, when they come out, the kids are like, wow, you know, some people, some kids haven't seen elephants up close, so it's a shock sometimes. I've seen an elephant only once. I came here because this is the first time I've been able to see elephants at the fair. My thing is the elephants. My wife, she takes she does the camels and the horses and the dogs and things like that, but my, my, my love is with the elephants.
the camels bring a wow from the crowd too. They look much bigger in person. Horses and ponies keep the show moving before it's all over. A combination of education and show, something the 4-H'ers can appreciate. Wow, there really is more than Gordon and <laughs> There, Joe. Yeah, this absolutely. is just crazy tonight. Anyway, who knew that you could find the circus right here in Indiana? It's so much fun. Well, and what's so cool is when you go around and you, you're going to all these different shoots and meeting all these great Hoosier people, yeah. but they're so excited mm -hmm. to see us because I think they really want to share their story. Yeah, it's And that's been what's fantastic. been so inspirational for me, too. And think about all the artists, right. too, that we've had on this show. The musicians we've seen, the talent has been mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things about being on the weekly special is has been meeting all the really talented musicians. Yes, I love being introduced to the bands that we've had on the show. I will say, though, I became a huge fan of the Valeurs after they were here. Oh, they're fantastic. Those girls are fantastic. I, I could listen to them all day. Mm -hmm. Their style, their sound, just loved it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, it's been so much fun, Pam. We've had a lot of great moments together over the years. Yes, and even though we will be saying goodbye tonight, you can always watch our segments on our website, weeklyspecial.org. Go there and watch your favorite Joe and Pam moments. And remember, the weekly special will still be here. We have two new co-hosts, <laughs> Daryl Neer and Erica Sagan, that will definitely continue on our legacy here. Yes, and we wish them the very best of luck. They're going to have an absolute blast. And Joe, we have had an absolute this blast. Has been amazing. I'm going to really miss it. Uh, I look forward to watching it in the future with our new uh, co-hosts. And we have to thank our wonderful crew right yep. here in the studio too. Definitely. Uh, Sarah Curtis, our producer, has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. I was here before with Eric Bolstridge yep. and of course Anne. Che and our, our great director Jay Kincaid and Courtney with Mardon Salon for doing hair and makeup love it <laughs> thank you so much Joe thank you it has been a pleasure and for the last time have a wonderful night thank you for all of your support thanks for tuning in with us for these years we're going to miss it have a great night
Production support for the weekly special is provided by Smithville, a local provider of fiber optic based internet, TV, and phone services. Smithville's quantum fiber optic network allows large amounts of data to travel around the world from local homes and businesses. More at smithville.net. Siam House, offering Thai fine dining and takeout, including stir fries, curry dishes, and banana fritters as featured in Bon Appetit. Lunch buffet 11 to 3 p.m. weekdays, corner of 4th and Dunn. IU School of Public Health Bloomington, addressing public health needs by preventing disease, promoting health, and improving quality of life across the state and around the world through research, teaching, and community engagement. Publichealth.indiana.edu. And WTIU members, thank you.